Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And welcome to tonight's meeting. I'd like to welcome the public. We have a, a full gallery tonight. It's very encouraging. And I'm sure we have a, a wide audience watching us tonight also. So welcome them also. Before we call the meeting to order, I'd ask uh, Madam City Clerk to please uh, share with us the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. Yesterday is a canceled check. Tomorrow is a promissory note. Today is the only cash you have. Suspend it wisely. Thank you. I'll call the fourth regular meeting of the Common Council order. Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Boren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Groff? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunis? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Here. Susha? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. Fifteen present. Quorum is present, and now it's time to pledge our allegiance to the beautiful country we live in. President Burke, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, President Berg. Approval of the minutes, President Berg. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I, I uh, move to uh, dispense with uh, reading of the minutes and uh, ask that they be approved as entered on the record. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion on the minutes? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, minutes stand approved. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first one is a letter uh, to the mayor from Eldon Berg advising that he's resigning from the Blue Harbor Resort <coughs> Convention Center Committee due to the fact that his daughter Kara is uh, also appointed to that committee and uh, the two could, uh, if they con had made contact, could potentially be viewed as minority quorum. I'd ask for a uh, motion to accept and file. There's a motion to second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And a letter to the mayor from Alderperson Serta, um, advising that with regret she is submitting her resignation as committee member on risk management due to committee's meeting time, which conflicts with her first shift uh, employment. Thank you, Attorney McLean. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file the uh, resignation. Move. Motion to second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Confirmation of the mayor's appointments. Mm -hmm. Attorney McLean. Can I do the confirmation first? Or? Uh, I'm sorry, mayor's appointments. Uh, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Alder Berson, Jeff Radke to be considered for appointment to the Blue Harbor Resort Convention Center Committee to fill the unexpired term of Alder Person Berg, whose term expires 4 07 and Alder Person Gene Kittleson to be considered for appointment to the Special Committee on Risk Management to fill the unexpired term of all the person, Bonnie Serta, whose term expires 4 07 signed by the mayor. Thank you. That will lie over. And hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Employee Remuneration Committee. All the person, Richard Manny, Chairman. All the person, Eldon Berg, Vice Chairman. Michael Leibham, the Corporate Representative. Joseph Botana, the Academic Representative. Don Koch from Organized Labor. Greg Wegeman and Steve Manchin. Uh, all terms starting 5-15-06, the aldermanic terms expiring 4 07 and the citizen members expiring 4 07 signed by the mayor. And those appointments will lie over. And uh, this is on for confirmation. Dieter Helm to be considered for appointment to the mayor's international committee to fill the unexpired term of Dennis Bauman, whose term expires 4 07 signed by the mayor. Thank you. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. Motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Attorney McLean. <coughs> Next we have the proclamation for the Sheboygan Area School District. I'd ask Dr. Sheehan, Superintendent of Schools, to please step forward. Mm -hmm. 
some of you may be aware that the, one of the school district for the Sheboygan area is one of the best schools we have, not only in the state of Wisconsin, but in the, in the entire nation. It's been a privilege to me to have been a part of that school board and that school district uh, as a school board member and a president at one time. I also would like to recognize Alderman Hanna because Alderman Hanna was a longstanding member of the Board of Education and president of the Board of Education too and he decided not to run for the school board so he could become an alderman. A wise choice. Thank you very much. But I say that because the school district has some very, very committed and dedicated workers and the school board of course is a very dedicated and committed school board itself. We also have Dr. Sheehan and his uh, administration that have given so much of themselves to make our school district one of the best school districts in the nation for the benefit of our children. But what does that mean to us? Well, that means that our children are getting a first class, top notch education. But it also means that we are generating some economic benefits for our community. The school district does not function in a vacuum and neither does the city of Sheboygan. We all have to work together because when one shines, we shine and vice versa. So it's very important to me, and I think it's very important to this council and this community, that the school district continues to do a good job as it has done in the past. And I'll tell you, Dr. Jean, I am very proud of you, very proud of the school district, and please uh, pass on my, my best wishes to the school board. And I'd like to present you, I'm not gonna read it all. This is a proclamation uh, committing the school district for getting to be in second place, uh, fifth place in the nation as determined by expansion management. Dr. Sheehan, would you like to say a few words, sir? Sure. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for this proclamation. Um, as your mayor just said, we, it is we, we are in this together. This is not just one by the school district and all its staff and parents, it's our whole community. Expan expansion Magazine, that's a magazine that goes out to all industries that are looking to expand and relocate and relocate to places like Sheboygan. Why? The quality of life here, the quality of education here, and the quality of people here. We are all in this together. So on behalf of the whole district, thank you very much. Okay, and we have one more presentation, and this is for the uh, Public Works, uh, National Public Works Week, which is this week. And this also is a very important proclamation and recognition of, to a very important department in our city. A lot of times we take for granted what our city looks like. It's sort of like keeping house. You really don't know it's not clean until you stop doing it and people notice. Same thing with our community. Our workers go out there and work hard every single day and sometimes through the, through the night uh, during winter and sometimes during the weekend. And you wonder who cleans all these streets, who cleans all that snow, who picks up all that garbage. Well, we've got some great committed, dedicated workers in public works. They have done so much for us and at times it's so easy to not think of them because we take things for granted. But it's very important to me to recognize our public works uh, employees for everything that they have done and I wish them nothing but the best and I hope that they continue to do the good job for us because again, when they shine, we shine. And I'd ask uh, uh, Tom Holton and Dave Ebel to please step forward. Yes, let's give them a hand. These are the two gentlemen that make things happen at the Public Works Department. Now they're not alone, they're, they're a big part of a team. They've, they're the, the leaders of the team, but they could not do that work themselves. We have a lot of committed and dedicated workers, but these are the two people that I turn to every day when I need direction, when I need information, when people call and ask for help or want to express concerns. These are two people that make things happen. So gentlemen, please accept this proclamation for National Public Works Week. Thank you. If you would say. You. On behalf of Tom Holton, our Director of Public Works, who's recovering from some throat surgery, um, I just want to invite the public. This Saturday, we're going to have an open house to celebrate National Public Works Week. We're going to have at two locations, at our service building from 10 a.m. in the morning to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We have an open house with 
We're going to have equipment on display for people to come and, and just learn more about our operations. The other place we'll be having open house is at our wastewater treatment plant uh, at 3333 Lakeshore Drive, south side of Sheboygan. Same time, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So uh, hopefully you can come and make it and learn a little bit more about public works. Thank you, Dr. Sheehan, Dave Bebo, and Tom Holton. The next item on the agenda will be comments from aldermanic candidates, and I'm gonna turn it over to Steve, uh, Attorney McLean, who will uh, explain the process for the uh, comments by the aldermanic candidates. Attorney McLean, or should I? Uh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Attorney McLean is going to draw names randomly, and as he does, as he pick, picks a name, he'll ask that individual to step forward to the mic and they will address the council three minutes, okay? Okay, he's picking randomly. <laughs> and the first person is Terry Koth. Mr. Koth, would you please? I'm not a candidate, I just forgot my... <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Again, my name is uh, Terry W. Koch. I reside at 3507 Seaman Avenue. Honorable Mayor, Juan Perez, members of the Common Council, I have submitted my name because I am the most qualified candidate. No argument, I am the oldest. At past gatherings where I asked for votes, this is a time I've re read several pages of what will be my obituary, all about a distinguished career and full of accomplishments. Many of you have heard it, I'm going to skip it. I've been running a lot lately, and uh, I'm gonna leave that out. But the time is short and I wish to make three points. One, this body will make many, many important, long-lasting decisions in the next 10 months. I've been fortunate that most of my lifelong work experience required important daily decisions on, and I was on the man management level. I make good decisions, because I made good money making decisions. I was elected in 1961 for two terms on this body, and again in 1997 for one term. I have experience. I know where the toilet is. And that's an, uh, important sometimes. Three, all my life, I have as a taxpayer monitored and at times criticized this common council. I am aware and I think I know what's going on. In the third district, I have interacted one on one with hundreds of voters. I feel I know what many want in a candidate at this time. Again, I feel I am the most qualified who will require no start-up time. At age 72, no other candidate in this election could stuff in more life experiences essential to uh, decision-making than I have. I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Koth. Attorney McLean, next. Scott Lewandowski. Mr. Lewandowski. Can you remind me when I have 30 seconds left? Sure. I'm here tonight asking for your vote to be appointed third district alderman. At the last meeting, I gave each of you information about myself. I would like to add some further information for you to consider. In 2005, when eight of you were spending over four months of your time seeking election as aldermen, going door to door, talking to people, taking part in debates, etc., I was also spending the same amount of time running against Alderman Bauman in the same election. I showed that I was willing to put the time into this position. None of the other candidates here tonight 
chose to run against Alderman Bauman. In that election, 462 voters of the 3rd District voted for me to replace Alderman Bauman. This was the largest vote total against Alderman Bauman in 10 elections. The other candidates here tonight received zero votes against Mr. Bauman because they weren't willing to take the time and effort to run. This year I again ran for 3rd District Alderman and again none of the other candidates here tonight ran or showed that they were willing to put in the time to be elected Alderman. Over 350 voters of the 3rd District said they wanted me as their Alderman last month by voting for me. The other candidates received zero votes because they were not willing to take the time and effort to run. Each one of you here tonight knows how much time and effort is required to seek election as Alderman. I put in the same amount of time and effort as you did. I have also attended 33 of the 35 Common Council meetings since December 2004. Again, I have shown that I am willing to put the time and effort in to be an Alderman. How many meetings did the other candidates here tonight attend? Being on committees, I also know the time requirements. Last year, there were days when I had a committee meeting at 4 o'clock and another committee meeting 45 minutes later at 4.45, followed by another committee meeting at 5.30, all in the same day. I have shown that I'm willing to put the time in required to be an alderman. Have the other candidates here tonight shown the same type of commitment as I have? I ask for your support and vote tonight to be 3rd District Alderman. Listen to the more than 800 voters of the 3rd District who have voted for me in the past two years. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Lewandowski. Attorney McLean, next. Dimple Adams. Ms. Adams. Good evening. Um, thank you, Mayor and um, Susan and Attorney McLean and the Council for allowing me to come tonight. And also, um, I would like for my family to stand that's in the gallery, please. My grandchildren, my children, and my friends that are in here to support me. Uh, they're one of the main reasons that I'm running for Alderman uh, because my grandchildren attend public schools. Um, at James Madison and South High School. Uh, second generation for me on children attending South, High, South Sheboygan schools. And also, um, my children live and work in Sheboygan as young parents. And so we know what it is to maintain a household. And I am a retired lady living on a fixed income in Sheboygan. So I really know all three areas of what it takes to work and live in Sheboygan. I've been here 30 years, and I love Sheboygan. My family comes to visit, and they say, you know, what are the new changes in Sheboygan that's gone on in the last 20 years? And we always have something new to go forward to. And I believe that it's going to continue that way. I believe that Sheboygan's on the right track. And I would like to be a part of this team because I think we can make Sheboygan better. And I have nothing but um, positive, positive things on the agenda. I think that we can work and be a team, and I'm willing to roll up my sleeves and get the job done. And I would love it if you would give me a chance. I thank you very, very much for your support tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Dan Verhasslet. Mr. Verhassel. Go ahead. Thank you for your time tonight, Your Honor, Council Members. I'm here tonight to ask for your vote with a vacant seat in District 3. A vote for me is just that, a vote for me and not for anyone else or anyone else's cause. I want to explain a little bit about myself personally and give some of my general views about city government. Through it all, I hope to demonstrate to you that I bring integrity, intelligence, 
and business experience to the table. First, about me personally. I've been a resident of Sheboygan for 16 years. I'm married to my second grade sweetheart, Vicki, who has 10 years of insurance experience and who is a valued employee over at Acuity. I'm a father to my son Noah, as well as a son who's due to join us any day, possibly any minute, so keep in the phone with me here. I moved up through the business world from the local to the regional to the national up to the international scene. I've been responsible for and have successfully met budgets in excess of $110 million annually. I've worked side by side with some of the best business minds in the world and I've learned a lot along the way. When I think about my views on city government, three areas jump forward. Number one, I think we need to improve our business climate. And this, in my opinion, is going to require people within city government who have business experience like myself. I think we need to form a business development commission that can get involved in re actively recruiting new businesses to the city of Sheboygan, as well as finding ways to keep our existing business climate healthy. Number two, I think we need to manage, manage our budget a little more carefully. And this is going to require people with integrity that can make tough but fair and necessary decisions. We owe our employees in the city a competitive wage. We owe our citizens a fair tax rate. And we owe it to ourselves as professionals to use the tax revenues that we take in properly. Number three, we need to find ways to add to our citizens' quality of life. To do this, we need intelligent people with an energetic and innovative approach. The Aurora Health Exercise Trail and the General Bike Trail are good examples of something that adds to Sheboygan and draws in good quality people. By doing things like this, Sheboygan benefits from attracting and retaining more talented people to a more interesting city. As you can see, I have a strong desire to improve our business climate, our fiscal restraint, and our citizens' quality of life. And I've described the type of person who I think is necessary to do that. And I think that I am that person. This won't be an e easy task no matter who you appoint tonight. However, if you choose my integrity, my intelligence, and my experience, I think you'll be making a step in the direction that I speak of. I hope that you share my vision. However, if you don't, I still commit to you one thing, and that's respect. Respect for your decisions, respect for your hard work, and respect for your personal viewpoints. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Verhessel. Attorney McLean. And David Adams. Mr. Adams. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity <clears throat> to speak this evening about my qualifications for alderman for the city of Sheboygan to share some of my views of what I feel the responsibilities of an alderman are. I'm David L. Adams, 53, of 2227 Erie Avenue, Sheboygan. I was born and raised on a farm in northwest Iowa. I have made Sheboygan my home since 1973. I consider Sheboygan one of the best places to live, work, and raise a family. I was hired by the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department as a deputy sheriff on June 1st, 1973. September 1981, I was promoted to detective and put in charge of the newly created City County MEG unit. The formation of the MEG unit was the start of joint services between the city and county. Currently, I'm the captain of Criminal Investigation Division. I have held this position for the past eight years. Being the captain of Criminal Investigation makes me a part of the Sheriff's Department management team. During my tenure at the Sheriff's Department, I have seen many opportunities for shared ser services arise. Some were acted upon. Dive team, shared record system, current implementation of cell 911, indoor pistol range. Others were not. While there can be many benefits to the citizens of the city and county by combining services, we must judge each opportunity on its own merits. We must not hastily decide to combine services just to look trendy. To do so will court failure. We must be careful not to decide to take on successful services currently provided by the private sector on the hope of generating revenue. In my career at the Sheriff's Department, I have come to realize that law enforcement, like many other government programs, is basically a service industry. However, unlike the private sector, government provided services are a monopoly. This fact creates a unique challenge to elected representatives. They must provide the highest quality of service to the citizens of Sheboygan 
while living within their financial constraints of our current times. They will need to make some very hard choices in the upcoming weeks, months, and years. Some will be painful. However, we must have the courage to make those hard decisions to keep Sheboygan solvent, secure, a great place to visit, and raise a family. To accomplish this goal, we as aldermen must reach out to each of other, our constituents, department heads, and city workers to form a team. All of us striving to reach a common goal to keep Sheboygan the great city it is now and always. I thank you for the opportunity to become an alderman and help guide Sheboygan into a bright and vibrant future. Thank you, Mr. Adams. And now we're going to conduct the election for Alder Person District 3, President Berg. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I move that uh, voting be done by open ballot and the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives the majority. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on that? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Turn clean. <clears throat> Alderman, I would ask that you on this ballot, it says I vote for, print their name, my name, print your name so we don't run into <laughs> what we did last time. Please print it, both things. And you know who you are. Yep. <laughs> Alderman, you have elected a new alderman to represent the third district, Mr. Dan Verhassel. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Um, Mr. Alderman elect, if you would like to sit on your chair.
you, you are not allowed to vote, but you can certainly get the feel of it. Thank you. Thank you. The swearing will occur, the first meeting I believe is June 4th. That's when the swearing, we will swear in uh, Alderman Leck for Hassel. And we will do it publicly on, publicly on camera. Thank you very much, Alderman. We will move along to public forum. <coughs> Madam City Clerk. Uh, yes, first on the list is Susan Hunley. Susan, can I have your home address, please? <clears throat> and you will Sheboygan. Have, <laughs> I got it. And you will have five minutes. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Common Council, for allowing me to speak tonight. Um, the reason I wanted to speak tonight was about our new tourism uh, publication. And the reason I thought it was important to speak to you, the Common Council, is because you did pull tourism in-house to the city, and that started January 1st. That uh, vote took place last August. I was invited to a meeting September 3rd, and at this meeting, it was conducted by uh, Paulette Enders, because the tourism department has been brought in under planning and development. And at that meeting, um, I was curious how this was going to work. And so she explained that there was going to be a tourism director hired, and an assistant. And so I said, all the decisions are made through the department. She said, no, that the final decision on anything regarding tourism for Sheboygan lies with the Common Council. So I think it's very important that you stay on top of everything that is happening with the tourism division, because you are the final decision. Now, um, about a week ago, I found out that um, the tourism brochure publication was put out. So I called Kim Swisher, the tourism director, and told her that I found that my business, English Manor Bed and Breakfast, was promoted in the publication. She said it was, and I asked her where the picture and the description was obtained. She said she took the picture and she wrote the description. Uh, I explained to her at that time and I'll read, because I did uh, drop off this letter to her, that during our telephone conversation, that um, as the owner of English Manor Bed and Breakfast, I have professional photography in my business. And that's the only photography I've ever allowed to be used for any type of promotion. I also have always required proofreading for any description of my business, business before it is promoted. I went on to say in the letter, as she would know, she did not ask my permission to take a picture of my business, and then she wrote her own description for the Sheboygan Tourism Guide and also on the city website. She did not ask me to prove what was used to promote my business. So I was informing her as a city tourism director to gain my permission per a telephone call and send me a proof in the mail for any future promotions of my business. Because during our conversation, she did say that she had sent me emails that went unanswered. To me, that does not give anybody permission. If an email is unanswered, pick up the telephone, write a letter. Definitely get something signed. I then went on to say, I have invested heavily to showcase my business in its best light. If you put what the picture that she took up next to the two other business this is that our bed and breakfast, as you can see, it's an amateur photographer photo. I also went on to say, to have you take it upon yourself to take an amateur photo and then write your own description of my business, I find not only unprofessional, but lacking in plain common sense. And I finished that I would tell her in the future, in the near future, my decision regarding this, because as we spoke, she wanted to know what to do. Um, if you look at the visitor's guide, I'm, my business is promoted right in the middle of two other bed and breakfasts. It's impossible to, excuse me, it's impossible to pull out this information without affecting the two other businesses. And then on the other side, there's also um, charter fishing. So obviously I'm not going to affect other businesses. I do find though also, um, even though today 
Kim Swisher did as department head. And again, I think this is important for you to know because you are the final say for tourism. She took full responsibility for everything to do with this guide and said it was completely her. She apologized for mistakes that were made in it. Um, again, I, I didn't think there would be a learning curve with this job. I thought when we pulled tourism in-house, we were assured there were problems with the chamber. We were pulling in-house to have a better product. I don't understand why there would be a learning curve. Another thing that bothered me as a business owner, and those of you who own businesses, I think you would find this disturbing. She said that one of the reasons on WHBL on the Nick Reed show this morning that uh, the three bed and breakfasts were highlighted was the historic connection to the city, which I think is fine. But she also went on to say the B&Bs are really struggling. Now, personally, that is personal. Susan, excuse me, would you like an additional minute? You're at your five minutes wow, right now. Wow, I thought I was going. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Would you like an additional if, minute? If possible, thank you. Does the vote need to be taken? No. Oh, OK. You have a lot of authority. Yeah. Um, again, there are. Two bed and breakfasts. Now, mine is not for sale. I'm just not taking guests right now. I, that's a personal decision. But I know two bed and breakfasts that are for sale within 10 miles of Sheboygan. Really don't think um, these bed and breakfasts wanted known that bees and bees are struggling. And if they are, again, that's personal. Don't find that very professional, especially not to have it announced on the radio show. Uh, one last point, and I had several others to make. She, uh, Kim Swisher, did justify promoting the high school graduation because it fills as many lodging rooms as broad days. The difference, this is a key difference, people are already coming for these graduations. They're coming because their children, friends, grandchildren, whatever, are graduating. They would fill those rooms anyway. Broad days, that's the big difference. They may not know about Sheboygan. They might not know where the home of the brat. We want to bring tourists in. We don't have to promote to families of graduates. Um, there's too many other things for me to do right now, so I'll finish up. Thank you for Thank your time. You. And next on the list is Beth Pinter. And Beth, can you give me your home address, please? It's 1119 North 12th Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Okay, I'll be here just for a couple of minutes. This is regarding the Maywood Evergreen issue on page eight of the agenda for tonight. It's number 459. And the word evergreen was left out. Ms. De Molen's communication specifically uses the words Maywood and Evergreen Parks. These parks share a boundary line. Our current city code, section 1815A, reads, Pets are prohibited in all city parks, beaches, or other public grounds except as follows. And it goes on to list the three places where the pets are currently permitted to go. The laws on the books were written in the past century and probably for good reason at the time, but we are six years into a new century and it is high time the city released its stranglehold on the use of city parks and got in step with the rest of Wisconsin and the entire country who have been sharing their city parks with pet owners for some time. I would guess that over 50% of the households in this community own a pet, and that number may be a gross underestimate. The city has more than 32 parks, encompassing over 663 acres, and all of this is off limits to people with pets 24-7. Penalizing such a large group of taxpaying residents is unconscionable. To all you folks on the city, on the Common Council, I know you are not responsible for the antiquated park pet laws we have on the books, but we are counting on you with your experience, good judgment, and interest in the common good of the community to revise our outdated laws pertaining to pets and to move this issue forward. And thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> That's it. Thank you very much for addressing the Council tonight. Before I make some comments, I'd like to address the issue of uh, Ms. Kim Swisher. As you know, Kim Swisher is the Director of Tourism for the uh, City of Sheboygan. <clears throat> I would ask that you not prejudge uh, Kim uh, on the basis of what was said tonight. Uh, she has been at the job not quite five months. 
She has done an extraordinary job in the five months that she's been there. She is overseen by a, a department head, Paulette Anders, who supervises her. And she also has a tourism advisory committee, which is comprised of a cross-section of the lodging industry. So she is not making decisions on her own, uh, as, as may be um, easily uh, presented to you. I ask that you don't prejudge her. I have faith in what she's doing. I think she's doing a remarkable, incredible job. Uh, her learning curve wasn't big at all. Uh, I've said it before. She came in, hit the ground running. She's still running, and she's going. She's going to go a long way. So. If there are any concerns um, on behalf of the council, you can either address them to me, the, the tourism uh, committee, or, or Paulette Anders. That would be the proper way to do it. But I really believe that she's doing a great job. She has my full support, and I do believe that she will have your support too. Thank you. I wanted to make just a few comments. Um, and just so there's no mystery about it, uh, as you know, there's the mayor's delegation is going to Germany tomorrow. We depart around 4.30. Uh, President Burke will join me and his wife, and Alderman Groff and his wife will join me. And a total of about 22 people will be going tomorrow. It's been about 12 years since the city of Sheboygan sent the delegation to its sister city, uh, Esslingen. And it's very important to me, uh, even though I did not know much about it when I was invited, I've learned a lot of it since. And it's very important not only to our sister city, but it's very important I've come to learn to the people in Sheboygan, a, a big uh, percentage of our people here who are of German descent, they hold that to be of high value. And I've been nothing but praise and compliments on our decision to go 12 years later. So when we get back, um, and some may interpret this to be a time of fun, by golly, if I can do it, I will do it. But it's also going to be a time of some kind of work. I hope to bring back some ideas uh, from, from uh, across seas that perhaps will help us a little bit understand our, our situations in a different perspective, in a different way. Um, it was suggested today by Vice President Serga that perhaps when we return, we present to you a, uh, a report. And I think that's a good idea, uh, Vice President Serga. We will do that, so long as you promise not to get jealous of our good time, OK? <laughs> but maybe we're not going to have such a good time. But I think it's a great idea, and we will do that. The other comment that I wanted to make uh, is in respect to, to what I hear out in the community. And it, it has to do with a general attitude, a general ambience in, in, in not only our state, but in, in our country. And subsequently, it's trickling down into Sheboygan. Somehow, it's found a way to, to, to uh, trickle down. Uh, we've got some, some serious problems in our country. We've got our president being, being questioned. His leadership is being questioned, at times attacked. Uh, we've got problems with war. Uh, we've got problems with immigration. It seems that everywhere you turn around, there's problems. Um, I feel confident that our president will find the solutions uh, at some point, and the people who work with him will help him find those solutions. But I wanted to make some comments with respect to Sheboygan, uh, using that as a preface to what I wanted to say, and that is that we live in some tough times, really difficult times. We live during times when e answers aren't easy. And all women, sometimes there's no answer at all. And for most people, no answer is good enough. And that's just the way it's going to be. But I have faith and I have hope that we can turn to positive, to a positive mindset, that we can develop a positive mindset amongst ourselves and let us feed that positive mindset and attitude to our constituency, our public, so that they can start thinking positively about us and we in turn can start thinking positively about the things that we do here and how we legislate and govern our people and continue to make this city, one of the best cities to live in and to visit now. It's not going to be an easy task. Uh, I've talked to you about uh, what some people have referred to uh, as doom and gloom. And there's not, nothing wrong with referring to it as doom and gloom budget coming up. But it's going to be a tight, tight budget. I promise you that I will, con well, I will strive to be more positive when I talk to you about the budget. We've got some tough decisions to make. And it's not going to all be ugly. I think we're all going to come together at some point Everything's going to balance out, and we're going to come together and do what we need to do for the benefit of this great community. There's thousands of people depending on you and on me to do what's right, to take that responsibility serious, and take it further beyond our self-interest and re represent only the interests of the people. And that means a lot. 
if you think about the enormous, enormous amount of responsibility that we have when we make decisions, to some people, it would be unbelievable. To us, it's a matter of doing business together as a team. And I think and I believe that we can do that. I have hope and I have faith that we can do that. So I leave you with those thoughts in mind that we can be a positive council. We can be a positive community. There are things that are negative out in the community, out in the state, out in the nation. But we do not let, we do not need to let that engulf us and devour us and make us the same way. Please help me in staying positive and making good, solid decisions for our community and making it an even better community to live in. Thank you. Um, President Berg, consent yes. agenda. Thank you, Your Honor. The consent agenda, I'd, I'd uh, move to accept and adopt all our C's, accept and uh, approve and adopt all our C's, accept and file all our roles and pass all of the resolutions and ordinances. Uh, motion and second to approve consent agenda. Any discussion? Alderman Hanna. Honorable Mayor, I would uh, move to pull item 417 on page four, which is the Lao Mong American Veterans. What number would you like to put uh, forward? 417. We'll uh, pull so in forward 417 for a yes. separate vote, sir? Separate vote because I need to abstain. I serve as their treasurer. Okay. 417, we'll ask for a separate vote. Is, is there a motion to accept at the top of the report committee? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion? There being none, all those in favor state, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. All other items, 41, 436, again with the exception of 417. Is there any discussion on those? There being none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Burke. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 437 to be referred. Report of officers two, 438, lies over to June 19th. Please make that notation. It's not the first uh, meeting of June. 439 through 449 to be referred. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to file documents 444, 445, 446, and 447. Second. There's a motion and a second to file. Under discussion. Under discussion. I'm in favor of listening to the people, hearing their, uh, their thoughts and words through the communications, but we can't accept just anything. These, if you read them, they're sketchy and incoherent, and a few of them have racial undertones, so that's why I feel that we should accept them file. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwill. Any other discussion? Is there a second to file those? Yes, there is a second. Alderman want to my vote. Thank you. There being none, you want a roll call? Yeah. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Resolutions introduced 4 50 by Alderman Groff, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an amendment to offer to purchase. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for suspension, please. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend. Is there any objection? There being none, please proceed. And Your Honor, I would move that this resolution be put upon its passage. Second. A motion and a second. Put the resolution 450 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graff. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Berg. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 4 51 by Alderman Groff, authorizing the issuance and providing for the sale of 5,155,000 general obligation refunding bonds, series 2006 C. 8,575 taxable general obligation refund in bond series 2006D 
and 7,150,000 taxable general obligation refunding bond series 2006 E and providing other details with respect thereto. Alderman Drop. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for a suspension again. Is there a second oh, to that? Uh, we never mind, I don't no, need to. You don't to. need that? <laughs> then in that case, Your Honor, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Anna? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Burr? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 4-52 to 4-54 will lie over. 4-55. 4-58 to be referred. Reporter Committee 5. I'm sorry, just wanted to indicate for the council. Uh, there was a document that's uh, Exhibit B to document 456 that the clerk made copies of that should attach to that document. Thank you. Everybody got that? Okay. Report of Committee 5 to 459 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 460, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7046 based on failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask that we refer this back to the Law and Licensing Committee. Second. Motion a second to refer back to the committee. Any discussion on that? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 461 by Public Works recommending filing documents submitting a communication from the Sheboygan County Interfaith resubmitting their request to hold a farmer's market in Fountain Park on Wednesdays and Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. June 3rd through October 28th, 2006 and approving the request to have the farmer's market in Fountain Park on the north end of the park and to work out the details on parking. Who do we have uh, on that? Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to amend this to add a three-year agreement. Oh, I have to motion Pardon? first. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. I would like to <laughs> accept and file this document. There's a motion to accept and file. There's a second. Under discussion, now you can make amendment. I would like to amend this document to add a three-year agreement with the Sheboygan County Interfaith. With There's the a mo park. motion and a second yes, to the amend <laughs> the contract to, to be in effect for a period of three years. Under discussion. Uh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, that's going to be a three-year agreement for it to be held at Fountain Park. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, just a point of order. We're accepting and adopting, is that correct? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. Any other? Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. I simply want to note that at the public works meeting, there was ample discussion about this and much input from citizens. And there was a clear sense that if it is at the north end of Fountain Park, that should serve the general good, and the parking details can and will be worked out to everyone's satisfaction. Uh, so a strong public uh, voice at that meeting. Thank you, Alderman Manny. It's also very difficult for any organization, in particular for this council, to deal with this issue year after year after year after year. After year. It doesn't allow the organization to plan ahead, to, to make projections, and, and to do a good job at what they do uh, with, with having that fear behind them. Are we going to allow, or we're going to be allowed to use a park again? Um, I think it's a good move. On the amendment, any discussion on that? You want to vote, boys? On the amendment, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now you need to make a motion to accept and adopt as amended. Make a motion to accept and adopt as amended. Second. Second. Under discussion. There being none, you want to roll on this mm -hmm. one? Call the roll, please, Madam Clerk. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. 
Warren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. and Davis. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 7 4 62 by Public Works recommending filing resolution number 3240506 by Alderman Bauman, Manny, Kittleson, Berg, and Van Akron granting the Sheboygan County Interfaith Organization permission to temporarily relocate the farmer's market in the northeast corner of Yonkers parking lot. Alderman Meyer. Motion to file. Second. Point of order, it would just be a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee which will file the resolution. Thanks. Are you in agreement with that? Yes, thank you. Who second? <laughs> in agreement with that, sir? Very good. Under discussion to accept and adopt, in effect filing it, we've dealt with it already. None? Please call the roll. Mm -hmm. Hannah? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Graf? 15 ayes. Motion carries. 463 to 464 to be referred. Report of Committee 9465 by Public Works recommending repealing and recreating subsection 18-15, subsection B3 of the Municipal Code relating to the designated dog walk, er dog walk areas and passing the substitute ordinance as amended. Alderman Meyer. We recommend, I need a motion to put upon its passage. Okay, we need to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the substitute ordinance as amended. Is that okay with you? Yes. Is there a second again? There was a second, all right with you. Okay, any discussion on that? We're accepting and adopting and passing the substitute ordinance as amended. Under discussion, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as we've heard before, there is no perfect place for a dog run but now we do have a place for the dogs to run off leash. And I think it's a good move by the Public Works Department. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Alderman Hanna. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I just want to comment that I think this is a good first step. Um, don't forget the dogs on the north side. <laughs> but you don't have a dog. Alderman Hanna, thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I just want to say that this is a first step, and I know this is not going to make everybody happy in the city, but it is a first step. Let's give it a try, and we will be looking for other um, areas on the north side to satisfy the north side. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to bring up the second step, possibly. The Committee of the Whole meeting, we had a document about a dog owners uh, leash dogs at Maywood. And I had a lot of co uh, public comments on that, so we'll have public input at that meeting when, in the future when we have that. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwill. Okay, any more discussion? Please call the roll, Madam Clerk. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Groff? No. And Hannah? Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Matters laid over 11, 341, resolution number 70607 by Alderman Groff, Hannahs, Clayunas, Susha, and Boren, authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2006 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that document, that resolution, uh, 341, which is establishing the appropriations for Independence Day Parade. Um, and then also 342, which is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2006 uh, budget, which is establishing estimated appropriations for the July 4th celebration services. The balance in the general contingency after this transfer will, transfer will be $106,675. I would move that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Motion to second to put both upon their passage under discussion. <clears throat> there being none, please call the roll, Madam Senator Kirk. Clayunas? Yes. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. 
Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 356, General Ordinance Number 10607 by Alderman Vanderweel, Montemayor, Meyer, Serta, and Meyer, relating to. Well, we have two Meyers there. <laughs> we have two Meyers there? Yes. And which one is Okay. It? Strike There's only one, one Meyer. Meyer. <laughs> Strike one, one of those Meyers. Yeah. But let me start over. General Ordinance Number 10607 by Alderman Vanderweel, Montemayor, Meyer, Serta relating to no parking periods to amend existing no parking zone currently in effect in the 1500 block of Union Avenue and to replace it with no parking between driveways. Signs along the north side of Union Avenue. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we put the general ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put general ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. At public protection and safety meeting, um, we have lots of business having to do with parking areas and parking restrictions. And the police department does a wonderful job going out there, measuring it off, knowing where to put the signs, and then writing it clearly so we understand what's going on. Thank you, Alamar Montemayor. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Clayunas. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 466, a resolution by Alderman Boren, Graf, Meyer, Montemayor, Manny, and Clayunas authorizing the formation of a Metropolitan Law Enforcement. Services Study Committee to review the opportunities and challenges of the possibility of contracting with the Sheboygan County Sheriff for Law Enforcement Services. Alderman Born. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask for suspension of the rules. There's a motion and a second to suspend. Is there any objection to that? There being none, please proceed, Alderman Born. I'd like to make a motion to put this resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman. Thank you again, uh, Your Honor. Uh, for the people at home and the people in the audience that don't have a copy of this uh, resolution, uh, back in uh, October of last year, I appeared before the council and brought the council's attention uh, regarding Act 40, which was a law that was passed by the legislature last year in a bipartisan manner. And it was uh, passed at the request of muni municipalities throughout Wisconsin asking uh, the law states that municipalities like Sheboygan, through this act, will be able to have discussions with uh, their sheriff department about the possibility of uh, contracting with the sheriff's department to po provide police services. I just wanted to let uh, everybody here that doesn't have a copy of the document and at home that Act 40 doesn't really mandate anything. All it does is allow for a discussion, uh, for the city of Sheboygan to have a discussion <laughs> with the sheriff's department with, with, for the possibility of contracting law enforcement services with the sheriff's department. I want to go on record as saying that I believe the uh, men and women of the Sheboygan Police Department are doing an excellent, excellent job. But the citizens' budget survey that, uh, was, that just came out, the results of that, 80% of the Sheboygan citizens who participated in the citizen budget process agree that the city should share, ser share services and costs by merging the police with the sheriff's department. All we're doing with this document is allowing for this study. Again, it does not mandate anything. And again, for the people that do not have the document, I would like to, to let you know who we are proposing serve on that committee, uh, the study committee. Two other persons. One CPA, one business leader, one labor leader, one school district representative, uh, one citizen at large, one county board supervisor that represents the city of Sheboygan, one county board supervisor who represents Sheboygan County. That we're proposing that the non-voting members be one poli Sheboygan Police Department representative, one Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department representative, Sheboygan City Attorney, and the Sheboygan County Corporate Council. So I think what 
the resolution proposes is a very balanced uh, potential committee uh, where all interests in this study will be heard. And again, uh, this is only going to be a study committee. Uh, it's going to be in existence for 90 days, and then that committee will have to come back and uh, uh, talk to the council, and also a joint meeting of the council and the county board supervisors. So I uh, respectfully request that you uh, put this resolution upon its passage. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I'm, guess I'm, I'm just wondering then, um, if this is just a study, how is this going to affect the police station timeline? I mean, we have a timeline, don't we, on board here with the building of our police station? Is this going to affect this in any way? We Can have we are on schedule. We are scheduled to break, break ground in 07. And how is it going to affect? I is don't it? know in what way. Okay. So. Alderman... President Byrd. Yes, thank you. Uh, this, uh, to me, is a huge issue. Uh, probably one of the most significant ones we'll be confronting. And uh, for me, I have not a concern that we address the issue. That's our job. My concern is that we outsource it to an independent uh, committee. If you will recall the process we went through to select a police station site, we used the committee of the whole as the primary vehicle that vetted the various sources. Uh, that, for me, is, I think, the appropriate place to stage any discussion. And I know that uh, uh, when Alderman Susha, I believe, drafted the resolution, and we had been in touch regarding this, after some consideration, I felt strongly that the Committee of the Whole should be the primary place where this is, is taking place. Uh, the decision to proceed with the police station is inextricably tied up with the matter of uh, if we're going to outsource uh, our, our police department. Uh, I'm an old farm kid, and my guess would be that if my dad went to the banker and said, uh, I'm thinking of get, selling all of my livestock, but I'm wondering if you'll loan me money to build a new barn, something would tell me that the person who gave me the money would say that wouldn't be appropriate. That's essentially what we're doing, and I think that's why this needs to be dealt with in conjunction with the committee of the whole meeting couple of other factors that play in, into that particular decision. The committee of the whole can meet on alternate Mondays. If you look at appointing an independent committee, uh, the first time you could appoint, uh, you could bring people forward would be in early June. Uh, we would lie over for two weeks because I believe that's a requirement. And likely we wouldn't have a committee be able to get up and running until sometime early in uh, July. Committee of the whole is also televised. I think this is an area that has a good deal of community interest because one third of our budget is the police department budget. Uh, a couple of other thoughts. Council members are much more accessible than committee members. And the thought uh, of getting calls, which I'm sure we will on this, and then trying to negotiate or find out what the answer is by contacting the committee members seems to me to be a remarkably cumbersome mechanism uh, to, to provide governance. The buck stops with us. I think it should start with us. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, use the committee of the whole to very quickly come to some preliminary decisions and then uh, for that purpose, if additional study groups are indicated, uh, we can certainly appoint them at that time. That's why I am moving to refer this document to the committee of the whole. Okay. Motion a second to refer to the committee of the whole Discussion on the referral only. I have got some lights blinking. Alderman Ryan, did you want to discuss the referral? Or did Alderman Ryan, please rise. Did you want, no? No, sir. Thank you. Anybody, Alderman Vanderbilt? Uh, referral? Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. On the referral, June 12th, plan on a committee of the whole meeting to discuss the current situation on the police station. I was working with Alderman Graf to set that up. If we refer this, I can put this on the agenda, then after we talk about the police station, then we can talk about this. I do have some concerns if we're talking about having the committee of the whole as the main body to discuss this, because as it looks, we have a really heavy agenda for the year. We're looking at two, two meetings a month, because we have lot, lots of documents coming in. And the meetings will be longer, but that's what we're here for. But just 
that, that's my concern. Thank you. Just keep in mind that the committee of the whole is you. You're here already. The committee of the whole is a deliberation, deliberating committee. It does not make any definitive decisions. It simply recommends to the council, which is us, if you were to pass a resolution that does not preclude you from discussing it at the Committee of the Whole, nonetheless, next week. What I'm trying to say is don't get the impression that if you don't refer it, that if you, ref that if you don't refer it, you won't be able to discuss it at the Committee of the Whole. You can discuss anything you want at the Committee of the Whole. So if you vote to pass a resolution upon the passage, you're not prevented from getting together as a Committee of the Whole and talking about it anyway. Alderman Ratke, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm totally against sending this to the committee as a whole. Time is of the essence here. We have a police station on the drawing board. Police contracts are also coming up this year, if I'm not mistaken, and this also hinges upon a year when the police contracts have, uh, 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 have come up for negotiation, negotiations, if I'm not mistaken, looking at the act myself. But this is something we owe the citizens. The Sheboygan Police Department is about a third of our budget. Last year in the budget process, I asked several questions of the Sheboygan Police Department that were not answered because they just simply weren't prepared. They can't simply just come in and give us answers in their budget. We need to take a look at this. If this can save the taxpayers of this community two and a half million dollars, for example, on a hundred thousand dollar home, that's 135 bucks back in your pocket. That's at Christmas time. Isn't that something nice underneath your Christmas tree? Sending it to the committee to whole? No. We need to send it to these people that are listed here and let them take on the task of taking a look and seeing, can we merge these two services together and make it work for the people of the city of Sheboygan? Let's be careful that we stick with the, ref the issue to refer. We can discuss mm -hmm. that other issue if it doesn't pass. All of them sushi. <coughs> uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to clarify something that Mr. Berg, Alderman Berg said, is that I did not author this resolution. I received a copy from Alderman Berg, or I'm sorry, Alderman Bourne, and um, that's how it came into my possession. Um, I, too, oppose sending this at this point in time to the Committee of the Whole. I think that it's important that we get a perspective from all the stakeholders involved, everybody who has something to gain or lose from this possibility. And I think that this committee that Alderman Bourne has proposed by <coughs> including the County Board Supervisors and including uh, a labor leader, to me, the labor leader would probably be a president of the the police union or somebody related uh, to them in that fashion. And I think they need to have a say in the matter. If we discuss this in Committee of the Whole, we're cutting out all of these people who are potential stakeholders. They wouldn't have a vote into whether we should proceed with this or not. And that's why I think it's important that this committee be formed. And I think time is of the essence. This should not have any impact in our plans that we're working on right now to move ahead with building the police station. I think both of these things need to go on simultaneously. It's great to hear that we're going to have a committee the whole meeting to be discussing uh, the police station plans and where we stand. But I think mixing this issue in with it, we're comparing apples to oranges. And what I would recommend that we do is that right now we have a motion on the floor to refer this to committee the whole. I would suggest that we vote no to that. Let this committee uh, be voted on based on its merits. And perhaps if it fails, then in June, bring back a proposal similar to this one where these issues would be discussed in the Committee of the Whole. So that's what I would ask uh, support for right now. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Susha stole my thunder, but um, I agree with her. Um, the makeup of this committee is a very, um, very well thought out, and it covers the county and um, police and sheriff's department representation. And we owe it to the people of this city to look into this and not just halfway. We need to do a good job. And the forming of this committee is a very good start. So I prefer the committee. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm against referring this to the committee to hold as well. And the clear reason for me is what's essential in this discussion is discussion. If this is referred to the committee of the whole, we will receive reports from groups and people, but those groups and people will not have a chance to dialogue. That dialogue, I think, is what clarifies and sharpens a committee's uh, perspective and gives a whole lot of wisdom. If you have to sit and just breathe it all in, and four or five meetings later, then kind of uh, 
bring our conclusions together. I don't think we'll have the dialogue and give and take that's essential to build uh, some wisdom on this issue. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I respectfully disagree with uh, referring it to the Committee of Whole, uh, mainly for the reasons that were just stated, that I, th I think we have to have discussion amongst all the stakeholders, and I think the proposed committee structure uh, deals with that very well. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it seems to me that this... The, the, the police station is on a timeline, as far as the building of the police station. To bring this resolution forward at this time um, appears to me to, will result in delaying the building of the police station. Um, I do believe that it should not be referred to the Committee of the Whole. I do believe that it should be voted on this evening. Um, However, I do not see how we can be building a police department and at the same time be talking about basically farming out our police services. Thank you, Alderman Bryan. Did you wish to speak, President Burke? Uh, I guess one last time. I think the stakeholders are the taxpayers and the residents of the city uh, who have a vested interest in where we go with this very critical item. I think that dialogue can and should occur at the, at the level of the community as a whole. If we are going to cooperate and solve problems, what a better place to resolve things than when we sit in, in, as a committee. I think there are a number of interventions or ventures we can look at. We have uh, in the past relied on, I think, the, the wisdom of uh, a faculty member from Lakewood College, uh, Dr. Brandon Coy. I have contacted him. I haven't received a return call, but I think a part of this really involves having the ability to look at a review of the literature to say what has been the experience of other communities like ours in developing protocols for combining services. I think information like that would be a valuable first step in our beginning to understand the wisdom of the process. And if the committee of the whole would so deem that based upon that, we see some very clear cost savings and efficiencies that can be gained, I think at that time, certainly I would be all for uh, having a, a specialized committee that could take the uh, information of the next step. But I think to use the committee as a whole for that initial effort and to have the availability of someone who can review the literature and stand at arm's length from the process and provide us with the background and understanding of communities like ours that have walked uh, down this path would be invaluable. Thank you, President Berg. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I beg to differ with Alderperson Berg. This law is so new. It came into effect last fall. What other communities have even done this before? I think the way this is laid out, we should send this to the committee as it's laid out here and not to the committee of the whole because we don't have the answers. These people looking at this uh, represents the city of Sheboygan County, Sheboygan supervisor, school district, citizen at large, business leaders, labor leaders, aldermen, re representatives from police, sheriff, attorneys, these are the people that can come up with the answers much better than we can sitting in this room on a, on a Monday night at 7 o'clock. These are people who deal with a lot of things every day of the week in the various different areas. They're the experts. We're not. We're not the experts at everything. Let these people come. And I'm sure we'll come up with a good list of people that can do this. But let them do this. I mean, because sitting here on a 7 o'clock on a Monday night, now we're going to have to hold something over for the next two weeks because we don't have the answer. We're going to have to come back. That's going to stall everything, and that's what we don't have time for. We need to move this thing forward, and we need to move it now. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to support um, referring this to the Committee of the Whole, and this is the reasons why. Um, I think that would be the ultimate best. This is a very sensitive issue, and I can give two prime examples that was explained tonight. Number one, um, giving the tourism department in the brochure that was recently put forth. As an older person, I'm not able to attend all meetings. And sometimes the communications is somewhat limited in our packets. I was unaware of some of the issues that was addressed by Susan Hunley today. By putting it to the committee of whole, um, and, I, and I commend um, 
Alderperson Vanderwilly, he's willing to put in the time and run the um, committee of the whole professionally. I think we can draw on these leaders. I would much prefer to do the homework ourselves. Yes, it's going to take time, but I think it's going to be the absolute best. And it's some of the comments that were made this evening too questioned our police department in not getting back answers. The public's going to see for themselves when we ask a question, they'll get we'll get the answers. And there, there's no gray, there's nothing, no rock that could be left unturned. And I much prefer to do the homework myself. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Serta. <clears throat> As a final point, just wanted to say that if there's a concern that this, that putting this resolution upon its passage is going to disrupt, delay, or stall, or derail the uh, the process that have been that has been put in place by this council, I can assure you, I won't be a part of that. I have made a commitment to our police department. I have made a commitment to this community that we are moving forward. And I will continue to move forward to build that police station until this council tells me otherwise. If you, if this council wants to form committees, that's fine. And if you do, I will continue to move the process forward to build that police station in 07 until you tell me otherwise. So it will have no part of me in stopping the process. Okay. Uh, got a comment if I could. Attorney McLean. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, relates somewhat to the referral, so I'll address it now. Uh, you know, my, my only concern on, on the appointments here is uh, a, as it's structured, the voting members, uh, two of them are Sheboygan County supervisors. Uh, I would presume, and I don't know if anyone's spoken to the county board or uh, county board uh, chairman, but that's going to require the county board to take action to basically have a similar type of document here where they designate the county board supervisors. Uh, I don't think it's incumbent upon the city council or the mayor to designate you know, which county board supervisors are going to be on uh, the committee. I think that's going to be up to the county board. And my understanding is their next meeting is not until the third week in June. So um, you know, that's going to be a time factor there if you're looking at county board representation. I think the concept is, is a good one. But I, I just see that one issue as a possible uh, delay in the, uh, the group starting their uh, deliberations. Thank you, Attorney McLean. OK, we will take a vote to refer back or refer to the Committee of the Whole. An I vote will refer. A no, nay vote will not. Madam City Clerk. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Bradkey. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Vanderweel? No. Boren? No. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? No. Hannah? Aye. Ha Aye. Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? No. Manny? Six eyes, nine no's. Motion fails. Going back to the original motion to put resolution 466 upon its passage. Please call the roll. And hold on. Alderman Groff. Yeah, and I just wanted to add something regarding the, the timeline for the, um, for the building of the new police department and so forth. And uh, to also add that this resolution is only looking at certain things. It's not saying that we're getting rid of the entire police department Police, we're just looking at certain things. If you will recall, three or four years ago when we talked about dispatch, now that's, a, a, I still have a question in my mind, what would be the best, best thing to do, to keep it here and to also keep it in the Sheriff's Department or to join some way together to have one joint dispatch center with all the um, additional dispatching areas that are available throughout, I think this would be a great opportunity to, to have a commission like this to look at and to present these things. But as far as I know, and I'm sure you know also, that uh, what was presented to the council back in, in April, I believe it was, was uh, the details for, um, for the police station, what our, our um, architect is looking at as far as um, building. And that still stands. And we're still moving forward to break ground either late in uh, 2006 or early in 2007, depending upon weather conditions. So. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. 
I'd like to pose a question and have someone clarify for me. My only concern is the three-month timeline. Please give me a rationale as to why that's um, the smartest kind of timeline to choose. Three-month timeline on that resolution? Yeah. Alderman Barron, you have an answer, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, to answer your question, Alderman Manny, uh, I think being the time of the essence with the negotiations of the uh, of the uh, the uh, contract for the police union coming up at the end of the year, uh, also with keeping the police station on track to be built in 2007, uh, I, I thought that 90 days was a good time frame to get this committee formed, have it meet, and get back with a decision as soon as possible. I think 90 days is a reasonable amount of time to get this job done once the committee is up and running. But with all the, with the other time constraints, I didn't want to have this drag out until October or November and then come back with whatever decision the committee uh, wants us to consider. It's getting too close to the end of the year, so I'd like to get this, if, if the council sees fit, I would like to see this committee get up and running as soon as possible. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the timeline, 90 days, sounds short, sweet. But the last, be it further resolved, says that the committee shall be temporary and shall automatically dissolve when it presents its final recommendation to the Common Council. So technically, it could be a year before we get the uh, final results and before it dissolves. So the 90 days, because of this last, be it further resolved, doesn't really mean anything. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Davis. Uh, Honorable Mayor, if, uh, if the timeline is to include the negotiations with the police unions, uh, why would we not want to eliminate the police department? I mean, you know, if, like Alderman Berg said, you know, we don't want to eliminate the police department, but if this timeline is being met to uh, include negotiations with the police union, why? Is that an answer to a specific Alderman Davis? Alderman Davis? Uh, just general okay. question. Just general, thank you, sir. Okay. Please call a roll. A mo an aye will put the resolution upon its passage. A no, kill it. Madam City Clerk. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. No. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Boren. Aye. Berg. No. Serta. No. Davis. Graf? Aye. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Clyunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion passes. 467 will be referred to Special Committee on Risk Management. 468 will be referred to Public Works and Marina and Harbor Committee. 469 will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 470, an RC by salary and grievances submitting a memorandum of understanding between the City of Sheboygan and Sheboygan Professional Police Officers Association, Sheboygan Professional Police Officers Supervisory Association, Local 483 IAFF, Local 1. 1564 AFSCME, Local 2039 AFSCME, and Union of Professional Employees, and recommending amending the 20506 collective bargaining agreements as follows. Vantage Care Open Effective Enrollment be June 1st through the 30th, 06, and the plan implemented July 1st, 2006. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to suspend the rules. There's a motion to second to suspend. Is there any objection? There would be a none. Please proceed. Okay, I'd like to move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. There's a motion to second to accept and adopt under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to give a little more background in regards to what this was about. Um, there was some discussion or controversy over some language that were in all of the union contracts talking about the Vantage Care program being effective July 1st. Um, the union thought it should be up and running by July 1st, and um, City Hall thought that that's when open enrollment should begin. What happened were there have some, been some very dedicated employees that have worked for over 30 years, and they wanted to retire already in June. 
So the language became uh, rather crucial for these dedicated employees. So I just wanted to thank everybody that was involved, the Salary and Grievance Committee, um, Ed Surick and Judy and Human Resources and all of the unions for willing, being willing to open up their contract and make this happen in a very timely fashion. This decision was made at noon on Tuesday and by noon on Friday, Sue Richards, the city clerk, had this document signed and on her desk. And if it wasn't for the cooperation of everybody involved, this would not have happened. And I hope that this is opening a new page, our new chapter in the book of city government because we have to learn to work together. And it doesn't mean that the city is always um, going to be um, giving things away, and I don't expect the unions to always be giving things away either, but we need to look at what's best for the people that actually work here and also what's best for the taxpayers. And I think this is the beginning of uh, hopefully a very good relationship between the unions and the city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, document 4-71 is a resolution authorizing entering into an agreement to install new underground duct and light bases along the riverfront boardwalk. That will be referred to Public Works. 472 is a communication from Tom Clark stating that he and his wife are against moving the dog run away from the Blue Harbor Beach area. And that will be referred to Public Works. 473 is submitting a report from the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce Convention of Visitors Bureau mm -hmm. for the 2005 activities. That one will lie over. 4-74 is an ordinance amending section 38-102 of the 1975 Municipal Code to eliminate the traffic signals at the intersection of North 8th and Erie Avenue and to replace the traffic signals with a four-way stop. And that will be referred to public protection and safety. 475 is an ordinance amending section 38-104 of the 1975 Municipal Code to eliminate the flashing red lights at the northwest, northeast, and southwest corners of North 8th Street and Ontario Avenue. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 4-76 is a communication from Joe Rupnick, 3216 South 11th Place, regarding his concerns with the business on South 12th Street and Union Avenue selling drug paraphernalia. And that will be referred to City Planning Commission. Motion to second to adjourn. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned. Thank you very much.
there's a lot of neighborhoods that need attention. I wish to commend Gina on the attention that she's been asking for and for years we've been providing. I think uh, probably one of the best statements here tonight, I believe it came from Silas in a sense that, I hope you said this, um, in a sense that I don't think we all know the Roberts Rules of Order. When citizens come, or uh, maybe um, older person Serta has mentioned that perhaps it needs to be mentioned. Um, I think that's probably a good lesson we're learning here is that the citizens when they come um, need to be informed. Now, I was not there that night, however, I've been at others and I did speak to several older persons about some of the lack of control that we were noticing. I give uh, Alderman uh, Susha credit for taking charge, yet at the same time, I think we have to remember that when we invite someone to come to a meeting that they're allowed to speak. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Matt Livingston, can you, are you getting prepared? Okay. Um, Marge Sagali, would you like to say one quick thing before Matt Livingston gives us yes, some information? Madam Chair, I think it's a very sad day in this council chambers when one of our citizens who has tried so hard, do so much for her neighborhood, to stand up at that podium and have to apologize for trying to do a good job. Thank you. This is just a very sad day. Thank you, Alderman Sagali. Mr. Livingston. And Larry Hilberlink. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair and Council Members. Um, I know it's getting late, but I would ask that you indulge us just a few minutes in a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'm sure we're all aware after tonight of the issues regarding Maryland Avenue, and I thought there was probably no better way to handle the situation than to take our, our digital camera and just go up and down the alleys, up and down the street, and just take a quick snapshot of this neighborhood compared to, at the end, a few other neighborhoods in the city. Um, Dean has been in this area since January 1st, tw 28 times to do inspections. I've been there myself 18 times over different issues. So it's not like we haven't been in this area. We have been really policing this. But as we heard before, there's 15,000 dwelling units in the city. So I think we, we truly have given this an inordinate amount of time if we see what we have to, to look at um, in this area. So. What I would like to do is, uh, this was August 22nd that I looked at this area when I took these pictures. And like I said, you realize this is one snapshot in time. Uh, Alderman Van Akron is correct, the boat is back. Last week it wasn't there. Tomorrow that owner will get a $200 citation in the mail because he, dis because he did put that boat back. So we did give him adequate warning. We wrote him letters, he did move it, and now he defied that order. So he will get a citation tomorrow in the mail just to clarify that that will be taking place. What I'd like to do is, um, let Dean narrate what he's seen in, this, in these areas, and then I'd like to close if, if, if that's okay. And if you have any questions as you go along, just feel free to stop us and talk to us and ask questions, because I think that's gonna be the best, best way that you find building inspections perspective of what is happening in this neighborhood. So, Dean. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Dean Heslink. I'm the housing inspector for the city of Sheboygan. Um, as Larry has stated, this is August 22nd, and as Alderman Van Akron stated, he goes there once a week and it changes every week. <laughs> and I can attest to that. <laughs> it's uh, at any given time, I can, I can go into any one of these neighborhoods and uh, it can be totally different the day be as it was the day before. Uh, as you can see here, we do have snapshots from this is up and down Maryland Avenue and up and down New Jersey Avenue. We do have a camper in a, a motorhome in the back, in the back alley here. This is in the back of uh, Maryland Avenue. Uh, we do have a, we do have a abandoned car here on a, alongside the garage. A, and this again was August 22nd. It uh, now if we go there, if we go there tomorrow, the camper. I'm sure is going to be there, the, the motor home. <laughs> it, uh, I, I have to speak with this gentleman again. He did say something about having some kind of, uh, if he appealed this or something, that he could have that motor home there. I, I have to check in on that again. Um, I did speak with him last fall, and he did, he did say something about uh, having some type of appeal or something. I, I, 
being new to this job, I, I will definitely check into it. And if he does not have the right to have this thing there, I will get it out of there. Um, here again is is these are is the back of the homes right behind or right across the street from Gina's house. Uh, I think it was two weeks after I started this this job. Uh, I I went here and I picked up. I think it was a stove, two refrigerators, and maybe a dryer out of the backyard. Now, since then, it has been it has been pretty good across the street. There is a little bit of garbage here and there, but but we do catch up on them. Uh, we do have a trailer here where somebody put some garbage in. Now, this has been sitting there for a couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to have to also get on this gentleman. He's on 14th Street. Um, this particular I can't exactly place this one. Oh, it is. It is uh, across the street from Gina. This is uh, this is uh, on Maryland Avenue. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, here too. This is. Excuse me. I'm not sure. What is wrong with this picture? I mean, it looks. Well, clean again, and to me. again, there this is. One is, there okay? is there is nothing wrong with this oh, picture. Okay. There, <laughs> I we were just going through Gina's neighborhood. Now, on, this was again. I got to remind you, it's August twenty second. Uh, we could have gone there August twenty seventh, and it could have been totally different. Uh, this particular is is next door to Gina. This is uh, uh, Kevin Nyheis owns this property. I am working on him on the roof. He uh, he he does have some shingles coming off of this particular property and and uh, it is a bad roof. I have talked to Kevin about it. He said he can't afford to put a roof on right now, but uh, he says he he swears he does not have any leaks in the house. And I, me not being able to be invited into this place, I cannot go in to inspect it, so I, I have to take his word for it. But he did assure me that as soon as he could afford it, he would be getting a roof on this on this residence. Uh, here another is another alley. This used to have a bunch of brush along the side of it. Um, it's cleared up. Uh, service garage has come and, and cleaned it all up. Uh, here again is, is the brush on the side. It, it used to be hanging over people. I, I had complaints of people brushing their cars on here, getting scrapes on the side of their cars. Uh, the, actually, the, the owner of this building did clean this up, if I remember right, right, Larry? Uh, here is the back alley, I believe. This is in the backyard of Gina's house. This particular slide here is is the uh, back alley of uh, Maryland Avenue on the south side. Uh, this residence is building a garage, or yeah, this this particular occupant. Um, the building materials there. If as long as he has a building permit, he de he is permitted to have these on his property. Uh, this is the dreaded boat and camper situation. <laughs> we uh, we did get it cleaned out. As you can see, it is parked up on the driveway, the camper. Um, as far as the boat, this was a picture of today, if I recall right. Uh, the boat is back. Uh, this particular landlord will have a citation in the mail tomorrow. 